Good morning. Let's stand, join together as we sing when the roll is called up yonder. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 is called up yonder I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. And when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. There's within my heart a melody, Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee, peace be still, in all of thy step and flow. Jesus, 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 sweet as name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. All my life was wrecked by sin and strife, discord filled my heart with pain. Jesus swept across the broken strings, stirred the slumbering chords again. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me sing as I go. Soon he's coming back to welcome me, far beyond the starry sky. I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown, I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing. As I go down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing for sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to His name, glory to His name, glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood applied, glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin, Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in, glory to his name, glory to his name. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to His name. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. 
plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to His name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Brother Van. Brad had his knee operated on last Tuesday, and so I'm going to be his spokesperson this week. Uh, just sorry about that. <laughs> I want to welcome everybody, and if you are a guest, if you get the Connect card in front of you in the pew there, please fill it out and uh, leave it on the table, and as you go out in the, in the vestibule, we can get in contact with you. And if anything that you need from any of the deacons, just let us know. Our mission offering is up to $9,579 of our $17,000 goal. So we're about $8,000 short. Pray about that mission. Sunday's coming up on March the 28th, where we'll have our map up here again. And we'll be bringing everything down and uh, pinning it on there and trying to hope we can pray that we reach that goal. Uh, the announcements uh, on the, the back of the bulletin there, you can see them. Uh, we do have the reserve seating over here on the south side of the sanctuary if you prefer to keep your mask on during the service. Uh, daylight savings time changes next Saturday. So uh, remember to turn your clock back. Uh, we'd go, we, forward, I mean. Yeah, I'm sorry. Forward. Okay. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get it right. Uh, also, we got the uh, Wednesday night. Uh, Bible study based on the family studies of the Ten Commandments starting on Wednesday uh, the 17th at 6 o'clock. If you can get registered, uh, we'd appreciate it where Brother Don can have enough material ready for everybody. It, it's not mandatory. There will be some extra stuff, but it does help if we know how many are going to be involved. Uh, Pat and Braxton have a thank you note in here. Now, a few things we need to start looking forward to brotherhood breakfast is going to start back on the second saturday of, of april uh, brother larry is going to get things started back there with us so we can have our fellowship there the small groups are going to start back on easter sunday at nine o'clock we're going to start 15 minutes earlier so we got time to clean up a little bit but nine o'clock on easter sunday we're going to try to start resuming our small sunday school or small groups study again so just stay tuned for the updates on that as we go I uh, want to continue to pray for Brother Brad and uh, the Cannington family. Elsie passed away yesterday about lunchtime. Uh, so keep Leela and the crowd and their family in your prayers. Let's go to the Word. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this opportunity to join together as a loving cross church family here, Lord. We thank you for Brother Herman and Faith as they commit to keep us going on Sunday mornings. And uh, we pray for Miss Miss Faye and uh, Brother Herman. Lord, we do pray for Brad. We pray for the Cannington family, Father. And uh, we pray that the opening up of our small groups uh, will go smoothly, Father. We can get back and be safe. We do pray for everyone that, that suffered from this COVID stuff, Father, that uh, you just lead, lead everything to the medical field to help us get through this stuff, Father. Again, we thank you for this loving church family. We thank you for the music Brother Van brings. We look forward to Brother Herman bringing our message this morning. We pray this thing in Jesus' precious name. Amen. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's a spirit. Of the Lord, there are sweet expressions on each face, and I know that it's a presence of the
you're right here with us, filling us with your love. And for these blessings, we lift our hearts in praise. Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my God. Hold me closely to his side With love and strength for each new day He will make a way He will make a way Thank you. first heard tell your heart to beat again it had such an amazing impact on my heart you know not only in its lyrical content but then when i heard the story behind it it really changed the way i looked at the song there was a pastor in ohio who had a heart surgeon that went to his church but one of the things that this pastor wanted to do was he wanted to see a heart surgery take place and when the day of the surgery came they rolled the patient in and they began to cut her chest cavity open they took her heart out and they begin to repair it. One of the things they do is, is they have to restart the heart again before they close the chest cavity. And as they begin to do the procedures to start the heart, the heart wouldn't start. Finally, the doctor did something so out of textbook and not written down. It's just something that you really don't do. And he got down on his knees. He said, Mrs. Johnson, this is your doctor. He said, we have fixed your heart. We have repaired it. There's nothing wrong with your heart. Ms. Johnson, if you can hear me, I need you to tell your heart to beat again. And her heart began to beat. And why do I share this story with you? Because the great physician has fixed your heart and my heart. But I find it interesting that sometimes we allow the voice of the enemy to whisper louder than the voice of our father. And it seems like some of these voices tell us that, you know what, that situation will never recover from. Or what that person did, we can never forgive again. But I'm here to let you know that you can forgive again. You can get back up again. You can move forward with your life and you don't have to walk with a limp. It's simply like this doctor said to this lady, this lady had to come into agreement. The heart was repaired. God has fixed your problem. Your heart is fixed, but you have to come in agreement with God. You know, I look at my story and I look at how I went through loss and how I had to get myself back up. When I look at the pain of my past, it doesn't sting like it used to, but I look back and I see, look what the Lord has done. And I know God wants to do the same for you. I want you to begin to hope again. He wants you to believe again. He wants you to trust again. The great physician, our Father, through Jesus, wants you to tell your heart to beat again. Shattered like you've never been before The life you knew In a thousand pieces on the floor Words fall short in times like these When this world drives you to your knees You think you're never gonna get back To the you that used to be so tell your heart to beat again, and tell your heart to... Okay, can we start over, please? Sorry about that. 
shattered like you've never been before. The life you knew in a thousand pieces on the floor. Words fall short in times like these when this world drives you to your knees. You think you're never gonna get back to the you that used to be. So tell your heart to beat again and close your eyes and breathe it in. Let the shadows fall away. Step into his light of grace. Yesterday's a closing door. You don't live there anymore. Say goodbye to where you've been and tell your heart to beat again. beginning just let that word wash over you it's all right now love's healing hands have pulled you through so get back up take step one leave the darkness feel the sun cause your story's far from over and your journey's just begun so tell your heart to beat again and close your eyes and breathe it in. Let the shadows fall away. Step into his light of grace. Yesterday's a closing door. You don't live there anymore. Say goodbye to where you've been and tell your heart to beat again. Let every heart break and every scar be a picture that reminds you who has carried you this far. Cause love sees farther than you ever could. In this moment, heaven's working everything for your good. So tell your heart to beat again and close your eyes and breathe it in. Let the shadows fall away. Step into his light of grace. Yesterday's a closing door. You don't live there anymore. Say goodbye to where you've been and tell your heart to beat again. Thank you so much, my brother, for blessing us with your singing. You got it right, brother. You corrected it and you nailed it. Thank you so much, my brother. Thank you. Sometimes we make mistakes that we can't correct, but you corrected that one and it was wonderful. I remember several years ago, well, many years ago now, I was at Parkview and uh, I had preached one Sunday on the Apostle Peter's denial of the Lord they were taping our sermons and uh, they were selling my sermons two for a dollar and some thought they were getting beaten they probably were but i went home one sunday morning and faye my wife said do you know what you said in the sermon this morning i said well i know some things i said i think i do she said no you don't understand said you said that peter crowed and the rooster prayed I said, uh, no, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. That's when I learned to hate CDs, you know, I mean. And uh, back then it was those little old cassette players. You remember Brother Van? And uh, I couldn't correct that. It was uh, engraved on the uh, CD forever. But thank you for ministering to us today. Thank you so much. I want to turn to John chapter 11 today, and I want to commence our reading for verse 1 
I want to read three different passages from this 11th chapter to get the full picture of what I want to talk about. So let's begin at verse number one. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his, sus his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, The sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. In the meantime, Lazarus died. Then after he had been dead four days, our Lord appeared. And when we pick back up, we're in verse number 19. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went out to meet him. And Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever believeth, who liveth and believeth in me, shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yes, Lord. I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And with that, she went back home and told Mary that Jesus had called for her. And Mary came out and said the same words that Martha had said, If thou hast been here, my brother had not died. In verse 33, When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping with, which came with her, he groaned in his spirit, and was troubled. He said, Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. Some of them said, Could not this man which part of the sea uh, healed, uh, who opened the eyes of the blind and caused that even this man should not have died. Jesus therefore again groaned in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by now he stinketh, for he hath been dead four years, four days. Jesus saith unto him, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe in thou that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound with a napkin. Jesus saith unto him, Loose him, and let him go. 
The title of the sermon today is The Day a Dead Man Lived. The Day a Dead Man Lived. Let's bow together, please. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for the inspiration of the hour. And now we turn our attention to your word. Lord, I confess to you, I have no word except your word. I have no strength, no power apart from your power. You know my heart. I want no glory, but that your name receive glory. Would you be magnified in this place today through this message? And Lord, if that couldn't happen, I'd rather not preach, you know. So we wait before you, hear from you. Accomplish your purpose in our lives, we pray. In the strong name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Lord was born in the little town of Bethlehem of Judea. He was reared in the little village called Nazareth of Galilee. But when he began his public ministry, he said the fox have holes, the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Obviously, our Lord spent a lot of time outside. And yet, there seems to be indication that there were certain homes that he frequently visited in which he felt comfortable. Many Bible students believe that one of those homes was Simon Peter, who lived in Capernaum. Another one was the home of Lazarus and his two sisters, Mary and Martha who lived in Bethany, about two miles from Jerusalem. One of the times he was visiting in their home is recorded in Luke chapter 10. Martha was preparing a meal, and Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus. Martha became disturbed that Mary was not helping her in the kitchen, so she came to Jesus and said, Tell Mary to come and help me. And Jesus responded, Martha, you're anxious about the wrong things. Mary has chosen the better part. What a wonderful time our Lord must have had in that home. The passage I have read in your hearing today tells of the day that sorrow gripped that home. It also tells about how the Lord turned that day of weeping into a day of rejoicing. That's why I'm calling the message, The Day the Dead Man Lived. There are four things I want to say about that in regard to the passage I've read today. Number one, I want to talk about the mystery that confronted Mary and Martha. Secondly, there's the ministry that encouraged them. Number three, there's the message that inspired them. And number four, there is the miracle that amazed them. I want to begin by talking about the mystery that confronted them. And the mystery was threefold. Number one, there was the mystery of the unexpected death. Our Lord had been threatened, his life had been threatened, and so he left the area and went beyond the Jordan River to a place called Bethabara, the place where John the Baptist had baptized in Perea. He did not leave because he was afraid. He left because his appointed time to die had not come. And so he is some 25 miles away from Bethany where Lazarus and Mary and Martha lived. One day, Lazarus became ill. And so his sister sent word to Jesus and said, The one you love is sick. They felt like that's all they had to say. They believed that Jesus would come immediately and touch their brother's body and speak the word and all would be well. They had seen him healed so many before 
there was not a doubt in their mind that their Lord was going to heal their brother. And yet Jesus didn't come. In fact, they watched their brother die and they were devastated. The mystery of the unexpected death. When my mother and father and my sister, who was 15 months my senior, died, we were expecting it. They had battled cancer for a long time, and they had suffered so much. And while it was hard to give them up, there was some relief to know that they would never suffer again. But my younger sister was different. On Friday, I talked with her. She got sick on Friday night. She went to the hospital. I drove to Tuscaloosa on Monday morning to see her. As I walked into the waiting room, her daughter said, Mother is not going to make it. I said, What do you mean? I just talked to her last Friday. And they said, The doctor said they've done all they can do. And that night, my sister died. It was the shock of the unexpected death. Have you been there? You know the mystery of the unexpected death. There was the mystery of the unexplained delay. When Jesus heard that Lazarus was sick, of course he already knew because he was divine, but he did not come to Bethany. He deliberately stayed two days longer and waited until Lazarus died. And then he came. When Martha went out to see him and Mary later, they said the same thing. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. What they were saying was, why were you so late? Why didn't you come when we called you? Why did you delay your coming? Now it's too late. Now, of course, the Lord was going to do something far greater than heal a sick body, but they didn't understand that. They couldn't understand the mystery of the delay of our Lord. Sometimes we have a difficult experience trying to rationalize why God doesn't operate in our time schedule. When God operates on heaven's clock, not on earth's clock. You know, he lives in the realm of eternity. In fact, a thousand years is like a day with him. And so he does not always do things on our time, but he always does things on his time. And his time is always perfect. In fact, Jesus was born on heaven's time. He died on heaven's time. He arose again on heaven's time. He ascended back to the heaven, to heaven on heaven's time. And he will come again on heaven's time. When God says it's ready for him to come, he'll be there. He always is on time. He is never late from heaven's perspective. And yet there are times when we want God to act in our time. We want what we want when we want it. Just understand that sometimes the delays of God does not mean denial. God has a purpose for his delays in our life. The mystery of the unexpected death. The mystery of the unexplained delay. There was the mystery of the unfulfilled desire. We would call that unanswered prayer. Mary and Martha had appealed to Jesus with the desire of their heart that he come and heal their son, but it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Their desires were unfulfilled. I don't know about you, but through the years I have struggled in this area myself. How do you, how do you rationalize our unanswered prayers sometimes with God's wonderful grace and love and power? We think we ask for things that are legitimate, and we believe the answer of those prayers would bring glory to Christ. 
And we believe we be, we asking in faith, and we believe our motives are pure, and yet the answer doesn't come. Have you been there? When you've cried out to God, when you've prayed earnestly, when you did the best you could in crying out to Him, and yet the answer didn't come. Years ago, I heard Dr. Clyde Francisco, who at that time was professor at Louisville Seminary, tell about counseling a little nine-year-old girl who was sexually abused. The little girl said, Dr. Francisco, when that man was hurting me, I asked God to make him stop. Why didn't God hear me? How do you answer that? There's a mystery sometimes to our unfulfilled desires. I'm talking about the mystery that confronted these sisters. But I want to move further in the story now and talk about the ministry that encouraged them. All of us need encouragement. All of us need comfort at one time or another in our lives. And they received that ministry of encouragement that day. And there are three things that encouraged them or comforted them. Number one, there was the ministry of shared grief. The sisters had each other. And there's some comfort in knowing that you are not struggling alone, that you're not in pain by yourself. It is the comfort of knowing that your loved ones feel the same pain you feel. So Mary and Martha apparently were able to draw strength from one another. I know when my parents died, my sisters were invaluable to me. Oh, they were there to encourage my heart. You know the ministry of shared sorrow. Many of you have been there. There was the ministry of the caring community. In verse 19, we read that many of the Jews came and comforted Mary and Martha concerning their brother. That's why it is so important to be a part of a local church. I was visiting some time ago in Bremen uh, in our community, and I came across this house, and I began to talk to the lady of the house, and she said to me, oh, I belong to Joel Olstein's church. I said, well, I, I want to ask you a question. I said, when sickness comes and death invades your home, who are you going to call on for comfort? I'm telling you, the local body of Christ is so important. Because we are a caring fellowship of believers who pray for one another, who love one another, who weep with one another, who bear one another's burdens, we are there for one another. All the important of the local fellowship. I hope you understand your value to the other members of this body. You're going through some sorrow today. I understand with one of your members who has died. And all oh, we're there to say to that grieving family, we are here to encourage you, to strengthen you, to help you in your time of need. We are here. It's so important to be there for those who grieve. The ministry of shared sorrow, the ministry of a cavern community, but all, most of all, there was the ministry of the loving Lord. For indeed, he came to them when they needed him most. They didn't understand, but they would need him more than they needed him earlier. And he was on time when they needed him most. Have you discovered that? In your hurt, in your pain, all of a sudden there's the obvious presence of the Lord there. He shows up in on time. He shows up when we need him the most. I remember that old song we were used to sing as a boy. My, that, that, that talked about when we needed him most. When we talked about he was there when I needed him most. To comfort and cheer the Savior was near just when I needed him most. He was there. Thank God he showed up. I don't know how it happened, but I can just imagine what may have happened. Somebody saw Jesus and his disciples coming down the road 
And he ran back into town and said, Jesus is coming. And the news began to spread. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. And then it made that little old house where Mary and Martha lived. And somebody, Jesus is coming. Martha gets up. She runs outside to meet him. And she says, oh, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But now he's here. The presence of the Lord. So important. He came to them just when they needed him most. He was there. But notice he felt for them. He felt their pain. He knew their sorrow. The writer of Hebrews in chapter 4 and verse 10 said, We have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. Aren't you glad our Lord feels our pain? He's there with us. He sympathizes with us. He hurts with us. He came to them. He felt for them. He wept with them. When Jesus saw Mary and others weeping, the shortest verse in the Bible is John eleven thirty five. Two words. Jesus wept. But all oh, what powerful words they are. Jesus weeping with us. When the maternal grandmother of Allie and Slade, they're here today, our grandkids died. Allie was five years old. We had a funeral and we went out to the cemetery and under the tent while we were there, the rain began to come. We all hovered on the tent to try to stay dry. And her five-year-old voice, Alice said, is God crying with us? Well, he is. He does. Aren't you glad? Our Lord comes. Our Lord feels. Our Lord weeps with us. The ministry of our blessed Lord in our time of need. We talk about the mystery that confronted them. The ministry that encouraged them. Note the message that excited them. Notice the announcement of Jesus. When Martha said, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. Jesus said, your brother will rise again. Oh, what comforting words that is. Your brother will rise again. He will live again. Words I've used so very often to encourage grieving families. I've stood by wives and who buried the husband. I said, you know, we grieve, but don't you understand? We'll see him again. He will rise again, those who know the Lord. I've sat with children who buried their parents, brokenhearted. And I, and I say, yes, we, we weep now, but, but don't you understand that your parents going to rise again? It's not the end. We shall see them one day. What a wonderful, wonderful truth that is. And now we all who know the Lord will rise again. The announcement, what a wonderful announcement. But notice the assumption of Martha. Martha said, I know in the last day he will rise again. What she was saying was, I'm assuming that you're saying that when the end of time our brother will rise. That's not what Jesus meant. But she assumed that. Uh, you, you see, Martha had, had, had not complete, completely come to grips with the issue. We have to give her credit. She knew her eschatology. She knew what Paul would talk about later in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 when he said, The Lord himself shall appear with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Thank God she knew that theology. But that wasn't what our Lord submitted the announcement, your brother will rise again. The assumption, oh, I know down the road he will. But note the assurance of our Lord. He said, don't you understand who I am? I, myself, am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. 
Do you understand who I am and what power I have? Martha, I am no less God now than I will be then. I will be no more God than I am now. I will have no more power then than I have now. If I could raise your brother then, I can raise your brother now. Do you understand who I am, Martha? Do you understand who I am? And Martha gave the greatest confession of her life when she said, I believe that you're the Christ, the Christos, the Son of God who would come into the world. I believe you are Messiah. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you're divine. That's my confession of faith, Lord. Oh, what a confession that is. It's the kind of that of the Simon Peter on in Caesarea Philippi when he said to Jesus, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. What a confession. And with that, Martha came back in the house and said to Mary, The Master has called for you. And she went out and she said the same thing that, Ma that Martha had said. If you had been here, Lord, my brother would not have died. But here's the difference. She made that statement at his feet. At his feet. She had learned at his feet so much. And now she bows at his feet. And I believe what she was saying. Well, Lord, I don't understand why you didn't come. But I trust you. Whatever you do is right. And so I just bow to your authority. My brother and sister in Christ, that's the essence of faith. It is saying, Lord, I don't have the answer. I don't understand. There are mysteries that are beyond me, but dear God, you do all things well and all things right, and I trust you, I trust you, I bow to your authority. The message that inspired them. Notice the miracle that amazed them. There was the wonderful, wonderful miracle of our Lord. Notice his request. Where have they laid him? Oh, he knew, but lead me to the gravesite, he said. There at the gravesite, remove the stone. Remove the stone. Aren't you glad the Lord invites us to do what we can do? He invites us to join him in his wonderful work. Thank God for our gracious Lord. You know, he could have commanded the stone to be rolled away and it would have moved. He could have summoned an angel to move it, but he said, no, you guys, move the stone. Do what you can do, and then I'll do what I only can do. You see, they couldn't bring Lazarus back to life, but they could move the stone. The children of Israel could not destroy the walls of Jericho, but they could march around the walls at his command. The disciples could not feed the multitude with a little boy's snack, but they could pass out the bread as Jesus commanded. Simon Peter could not cause the fish to swim into his net, but he could cast forth the net like Jesus said. You and I can't save a soul, but we can bear the message of the cross. We can preach the gospel. We can do what we can do and then watch God do what he can do. Thank you, Lord, for inviting us to join you in your work. The request of our Lord. Notice the reaction of Martha. Now, she had just confessed, I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah who would come. Lord has said, Lord, whatever you ask the Father, he'll give it to you. And now when Jesus says, remove the stone. My, no, no, Lord, no, Lord. By now his body is decaying. He's been dead for days. I'm suggesting that Martha's profession of faith was stronger than her possession of faith. Sometimes it is easy to say how much we believe and how much we love but it's a little bit harder to demonstrate that or to live out that truth. You've been there? You understand what I'm saying? Her reaction, no, no, no. And then Jesus says, didn't I tell you, Martha, if you would believe, you would see the glory of the Lord. 
Then there was a raising of Lazarus. Father, Jesus said, I thank you that you hear me. I know you always hear me, but for their sake, I said it, thank you for hearing me. And then, with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. And he who was dead stood up and hopped to the edge of the tomb, bound with his grave clothes, but alive but a lie. Somebody has suggested that he had to use the name Lazarus because if he had not used his name, everybody in the grave in the cemetery would have come out. Well, one day they will, you know, they will, they will, when he says, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. And the dead man lived. Oh, the excitement, the amazement, the miracle of a dead man coming alive. Here's the closing word. I speak to some either here or else by online who are physically alive, but you are spiritually dead. In fact, the better part of you is dead. It may be the Lord's calling you today. Come to me and I will give you eternal life. I'll give you life that is abundant, life that is victorious, life that is spiritual. Come to me. The question is, will you come out of your tomb? The day the dead man lived. Let's bow together, please. Father, I thank you so much for your marvelous grace, for letting us have these incidents recorded that we might learn. And God, we confess to you there are mysteries in life that we don't have a clue, we don't understand. We battle our own, our own misunderstanding. We don't charge you, we have no complaint with you. God, it's with our understanding. It's our understanding that we just don't understand. But I know this. I know you're there for us to encourage us. And you're at work in ways that we don't understand. We may not see today, but we will see one day. I thank you for the miracle of eternal life. And I pray today, if there's one in this building who doesn't know Christ, you will draw that person to yourself. Give him life, life abundant, life eternal. And Lord, I pray for those of us who struggle in some areas. Would you just give us grace just to trust you, just to trust you? Know you do all things right and all things well. Whatever you want to do with us in our lives, we belong to you, and here we are. And you do, if you will, what you want. We welcome that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to sing in just a moment. If you don't know Christ, we invite you to Christ. Calling you from your life of deadness to your life of eternal life. Calling you out of darkness into light. Calling you to joy unspeakable and full of glory. Calling you to peace that passeth all understanding when you come to him. If I can help you, I'll be here to pray with you. I promise I will. I'll pray with you. You come, you come, you come. If there are Christians who are struggling in some areas that I struggle to, you might just need to come to the altar and say, Dear God, I just want to bow at your feet and tell you whatever you do is right, I don't understand, but I trust you, I trust you, I trust you. Maybe you need to come and pray for a loved one who's going through a difficult time. You say, Brother Herman, I can't kneel, and I understand it's hard for me to kneel too, but you may want to come and just stand at the altar just for a moment. Your deacon will be here, and I'll be here, and greet you to pray with you if you need that. But let's stand together, please. Let us sing. Would you do it?